This is the second session that I've prepared on the Liturgy of the Mass. The first session prompted questions regarding the Liturgy as a sacrifice or as a festive sacred meal. The Liturgy by definition is the work of the people. Its purpose is to praise Almighty God. The praise of Almighty God is the purpose of why we gather together to celebrate the Liturgy of the Mass. It's the work that we do. It's done in celebration and praise, but not entertainment. Wise people can call things by their right names. And so wise people distinguish noticing from seeing. They distinguish listening from hearing, knowing from understanding. Distinguish happiness as being different from being joyful, and joyful different from laughing at a good joke. Faith is certainly different from hope. Faith is different from trust. A saint is distinguished from a good person. And finally, entertainment, a moonshot different from celebration. Look at the last combination, the difference between celebration and being entertained. I encountered this idea a long time ago from a book by a wonderful curmudgeon author Neil Postman, amusing ourselves to death. To be entertained is to be acted upon by others, others who perform for us. To celebrate is to act out our own preference for ourselves. To be entertained is to be acted upon by others who perform for us. To celebrate is to act out our own preference for ourselves. You see, one's passive and one's active. To be entertained is to have someone else help us to feel good by distracting us from the way that life really is. To celebrate is to mark out our own affirmation of the goodness of life as it is, even with all of its distractions. Celebration means that we greet life and shout, yes, instead of sighing and saying, well, yeah, maybe, I guess. To celebrate is to dance like the wedding scene in Fiddler on the Roof. To celebrate is to sing the joy of our appreciation, to clap in cadence with our soul. Celebration is to bet on the gamble that life is meant not merely to be chewed, but to be tasted. Not to encounter a sound, but to be heard, touched but to be felt, looked at, but to be seen, not to be endured, but to really be enjoyed. So here's a question. How do you come to the sacred liturgy? Why snarl if you're not entertained when the greeting of the priest was let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And when the Mass has ended, the congregation is sent from the church out into the world with these similar words. Our celebration is ended. Go and glorify the Lord by the way you live your life. Now pause. Who's leading you to do what at the celebration of the Mass? Why do you begin to celebrate the good news of what Almighty God has done for you 
and anticipate what is yet to come. Let's enter into the mystery of what we celebrate so we can understand it. If you've ever enjoyed a mystery or a play, you might enjoy this. Remember in a mystery, the sensual elements are far more than the pages of a book. The book can't accomplish what the play or movie does. There's the staging with sights and sounds, even music, which, when combined with the characters and their dialogue, may capture you and take you right out of your seat. At some point, the little hairs in the back of your neck stand straight. When that particular scene comes to life, POW! You're sent away out of your own seat. You run to the washroom and clean yourself up. That's the way you're grabbed with the celebration. Christians are summoned to go beyond what is feasible, beyond what is imaginable, beyond what is consumable, when we enter to the celebration of the mystery, of the message of our faith, the single proclamation of the presence of the Kingdom of God, to accept that we are part of the great mystery that Almighty God is setting out before us in lavish and humble ways, filled with grace, compassion, and love. At Mass, we are certainly playing a follow-the-leader dance of faith. The leader is always Almighty God. The prayers are always addressed to God our Father. Jesus, his Son, is the star, and grace is the goal. In all cases, God is telling us what he wants to be with us. He's telling us that he wants to be a sign of grace with us. That grace is the gift of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for our sins. The Mass recalls that sacrifice. In former days, the Mass certainly was celebrated as a sacrifice. The altar is called the altar for the reason that what is celebrated upon it is a sacrifice. On the altar, we place the sacrifice, the holy and unblemished lamb. God has asked us to bless and approve this offering in every respect. We continue to pray as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to you your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given to us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim. Isn't it now obvious that Jesus is called the Lamb of God because he is the sacrificial lamb? who takes away the sins of the world and sets us free from sin? God continues all the time to make a great covenant with us, a relationship with his people. By the covenant, he is ours and we are his. The sacrifice of Jesus, the Mass, restores us to a right relationship with God. In sin, we turned away from God. We were separated from God. But through the sacrifice, we are one with him again and forever. Jesus takes away the sins of the world because he is the suffering servant. In a straightforward way, covenant and sacrifice are linked together. 
And the Mass fulfills this mission. It is the covenant and the sacrifice that we celebrate. Jesus' first disciples celebrated this sacrificial meal on or about the time of Passover. Bread that is broken and a cup that is poured out is the new covenant. The Passover lamb that is slaughtered in the temple is Jesus, who will be crucified on Calvary Hill. All of this is remembered on the altar when the Mass is celebrated. Now, when the community remembers Jesus' death and resurrection, it participates in that saving grace of the Last Supper and the crucifixion that followed. Note carefully, this remembrance is active. It's not passive. It's not the same thing as remembering what Grandpa said or the way that Grandma cooked. It's not a reenactment of civil war as sometimes happens. It's not a representation of any event at all because it's not a representation. It is not a reenactment. Rather, it's an active participation in the saving events of the past into the reality of our present today. In the Mass, Christ is truly present, period. It is an act of faith, an experience of Jesus, truly God and truly man that we seek in the sacrifice, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, we find the salvation that we're certainly looking for. When we did not give that adequate reflection, we fail to believe that Jesus is truly present in the Holy Eucharist, the thanksgiving sacrifice that we receive. The Mass is a sacrifice. Do you believe that?